Hello and welcome to China Focus. I'm Shelley Zhang. The Spratly Islands, the Scarborough Shoal, these groups of uninhabited islands in the middle of the South China Sea have been the subject of big disputes between China, the Philippines, and other Southeast Asian nations. Now it's a big deal because whoever controls those islands and the, the waters around them control oil and natural gas deposits, as well as key shipping lanes through the region. Now, tensions escalated again recently when the Chinese Navy sent ships to the disputed area. Here to talk about this, we have a special guest. Now, she's been called China's newest public enemy number one. She's Loida Nicholas Lewis, the national chair of U.S. Pinoy's for Good Governance. Loida, thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. So, can you tell me how you first got uh, involved in the South China Sea issue? Well, it's sort of providential because I met this young man, a Filipino-American, who, who was born here in the United States, who has been tracking what's happening in the Stra Stratley, Spratly Island. And when we sat ag across each other, um, you know, without any intention of talking about Spratly, he started telling me about this billion-dollar biggest oil rig that China has constructed and according to China News Agency was going to be moved to South China Sea. Now I know for a fact that during the time of our previous president Gloria Macapagal Arroyo they had an uh, agreement with China to explore our seas and they found 213 billion barrels of oil under our shores. So where else is this rig going to come but to our shores? And so we, the U.S. Pinoys for Good Governance, organized a rally last year, July 8, to say, hey, not on our, our soil, our oil. Stop that. And I think we had some effect because it never moved out of Beijing. And we heard news that during the summer, they move it towards Vietnam near Paracel Island, but still within the 200 nautical miles of China, right in the middle of the 200 nautical miles of Vietnam. So the way it works is that, um, according to the UN Convention, that any, any waters within 200 nautical miles of, uh, of, a, of a country, they can claim it as their uh, economic zone. In 1994, the United Nations Convention on Flow of the Sea was signed by 120 countries, including China and the Philippines and many others, that 200 nautical miles from your shore belongs to you for exploration, for exploitation, and all its minerals. So that's the international law that we are working on. And that's why the Philippines is so adamant that China should not come in because they are claiming this is Scarborough Shoals to be theirs. And it's 120 nautical miles from the Philippines. So hey, this is ours. So it's well within, by international law, well within the uh, yes. Philippines. Yes, it's, it's, it's our territory. Yeah, it is ours. So let's talk about, um, since last July, it's the situation in the South China Sea is escalated, if, if anything. What has your group been doing uh, in terms of the, what happened last April when there was that kind of standoff between the Philippine uh, ships and Chinese ships in, in the area? Well, we decided, you know, we, it, it was some effect last year, so we had another rally all over the world because by this time, Filipinos and other places of the world you know, joined us in putting a rally against uh, China's consulate. But we said, let's move it up a little higher, okay? Let's have a boycott made in China goods. It's not against Chinese restaurants or anything that is within the country owned by Chinese Americans. It's against China made in China products. And so we launched that. And I guess it has an effect because suddenly the China news agency, you know, on television, showed me as number one enemy of China. So hooray for that. You know, let them know this uh, you know, group you know, can fight back. So you're seeing it as a badge of pride being called public enemy number one? Oh, no, no, no. I take it as yes, a badge of honor. A badge of honor that they know the Filipinos, the 10 million Filipinos in the diaspora will not stand for it. And, uh, you know, the, the colorary is that why not in the Philippines? You know, the Philippines, as many other Southeast Asian 
in, uh, nations are intimately connected to China. Economically, they give us loans, they're building our roads and bridges. So within the Philippines, it's very difficult to really spell out you know, your opposition to China. And so it's the duty of the Filipinos in the diaspora to say, hey, stop it, that's ours. So let me ask, you know, for, uh, it seems difficult to boycott made in China products. Almost everything's made in China nowadays. Have you found a lot of people are supporting the boycott? Well, a lot of Filipinos in the know, those because on the internet, you know, I see all of this connection. We're joining you, you know, all over the world within the Philippines. Yes, it is going to be very difficult to really make an impact. So we're raising up another level. China, uh, ICBC, that's the biggest company, Venus Bank in the world, but it is basically owned by the Chinese government. So what we're doing is we're raising up another level. When they were going to buy the Bank of East Asia, we, 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 we opposed it under the Federal Reserve Board, okay? And so now that it was approved, you know, it delayed one year, but it was approved. So the new owner of the Bank of East Asia, which has 22 branches in the United States, is here now in the United States. So in our rally, the uh, U.S. Noise for Good Governance rallied against them in San Francisco. So, you know, so, so you're moving it up a little bit. And if they intend to come here by American biz businesses, banks, you know, we will be there to say you are not we are opposing your buying anything in the United States because you are a, a disobeying international law. You are not a good partner for the United States companies. So you're trying to raise awareness about what's happening in the South China Sea by kind of educating people when the Chinese businesses and banks come to the U.S.? Yes, we have to interna internationalize the issue because this issue is very important for world peace, especially for the Southeast Asian and the navigation. You know, the area that's being covered uh, controls almost one third of international navigation. But the most important here is that the oil in the Philippines, if it is exploited, it will be, we will be number two under uh, Saudi Arabia in terms of barrels of oil. And aside from that, there are trillion uh, gallons of gas, natural gas, within our shore. You know, the Philippines is called Pearl of the Orient. Not only is it a Christian nation, but God has also endowed it, endowed it with you know, this kind of uh, mineral resources of wealth, natural gas, black gold. And so the, the real purpose of all of this is who will share that gold, black gold? Who will share this natural gas? So that is the real question here. So in terms of uh, these high-level diplomatic issues, mostly they're decided between kind of like diplomatic negotiations between like the ASEAN countries or uh, China and the Philippines on a high level. Do you believe that these rallies, these protests, these boycotts will, you know, outside of the area can have an effect? Well, it is a, for me, it's already having an effect with China. But the real question here is that Southeast Asia themselves were not willing to come together and issue a communique. So for the first time in 46 years, the Southeast Asian countries, when they met, uh, Cambodia refused, because it is an, you know, an, an ally of China, refused to come out with a communique. So within Asia itself, Southeast Asia, there is no willingness to come together and confront a big issue of territorial integrity. So where is the solution? For me, the solution is really in this change of power within China. They are electing a new head of the Politburo, which will be their president. And I believe that is Xi Jinping. And right now, it seems like he disappeared, so we don't know what kind of uh, activity is happening within China. So we are continuing to voice out so that the new leadership in China will listen to us so that China becomes not the big bully, but the big brother. So that China becomes, if it wants it to be a world power, not a world power that we're stepping on, the, on every small country, China, I mean, uh, Philippines, Vietnam, Indonesia, Malaysia, but someone who will help us grow up together as the new century of Asians, and not just China and everybody else poor. 
Let me ask, last month your group had a uh, global day for praying for peace in the Scarborough Show. Do you, do you see a kind of peaceful resolution uh, for this you continuing know, dispute? You know, I do believe in the power of prayer. I mean, let's just take the, do this during the Marcos time. He was so powerful, and yet with prayer, he was toppled down without any shot, without any revolution, without blood. Okay. So here, we are not saying that China should be toppled down, but that the new leadership will sort of be enlightened, that it is good for China to have peace with its neighbors and not have this imperial, you know, this is mine, that is mine, that is mine, which is what they're, what they're saying now, the military at least, the military faction, that all of South China Sea belong to them. They're basing it on a map of the year 120, how ridiculous is that? During that time, Italy, if, if, if with that logic, Italy should own all of Europe because the Roman Empire owned Europe in the year 120. Or all the Native Americans should own United States. Or even in the Philippines, our Negritos, who are in the mountain, who occupy the Philippines, should own all of the Philippines. So it's so ridiculous. And besides, there was a map that was shown by a historian who bought a book. In the year 1904, China itself published a map that showed that their territory ended on, on the little island, you know, close to Hong Kong and did not, conti did not contain the South China Sea. So making claims hit from historical comparisons isn't necessarily the, the, the soundest way to go. It, it is ridiculous. It is ridiculous. So I just want the new leaders of China to understand that they have a great future as a world power if they will be a good citizen of the world following the international rule of law. So Lloyda, we just have about a minute left. Is your group going to be doing anything uh, in the near future about this? Well, we are waiting because right now it's a status quo. Even if the Phil president of the Philippines, President Aquino, issued a proclamation that the West Philippine Sea is now what we call it. I mean, these are words, you know, as long as they continue to have war on words, that's fine. And we will see. Uh, by March, it will be clearer in China who will lead this, you know, a rising superpower. Will it be somebody who says, you know, this is mine? That would be very unfortunate because that was done by Japan in 1940s, World War II, that was done by Germany for World War II, and both of them fell, okay? So any world power that does not rule under an international rule of law is bound to fail. All right, well, thank you so much for joining us and, uh, and letting us know about this issue. Um, and thank you for watching. For more on issues in the South China Sea and other issues in China, visit us at ntd.tv.